So identity is really difficult to provide a simple kind of definition. And it's easier for me to think about some assumptions that I'm making about identity that help me operationalize it and make it concrete for my studies. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, the first thing that I would say is that my work um, examines identity in concert with a study of culture. So I cannot completely address this, the question, who are individuals becoming in this setting? Unless I also address the question, who are youth obligated to be in the setting? Mm -hmm. And so I'm always looking at kind of individuals' performances in relation to what the setting demands, celebrates, and marginalizes. Mm -hmm. So those two things have to be kind of looking, I, I'm looking at those things together. So this idea that identity is studied in, a, in coordination with culture, um, in doing that, I'm making certain assumptions. So let me kind of draw out those assumptions. So first, I make the assumption that people are formed in practice. So asking the question, like, what does it mean to be smart? What does it mean to be struggling? What does it mean to be a discipline problem, a genius? The meanings of these kind of the answers to these questions are context dependent so that labels of self and labels of others are only helpful if we understand the local context and the obligations and the norms and the practices that are celebrated and marginalized in those contexts. Mm -hmm. So one must also understand not only the local context and what's demanded there and, and how that in, um, implicitly positions certain kinds of students and youth and um, kind of celebrates some performances and marginalizes others, but we also have to look at macro level structures. So this is another kind of um, aspect of the work. Um, so that's the first thing is people are formed in practice. Then a second assumption that I make is that um, identity outcomes of any given set of practices or any local context is often heavily shaped by larger social structures like race and class and gender. These societal structures, um, they constrain, but they don't determine individual STEM trajectories and pathways. People have a choice in who they become but that's not an unrestrained choice. Mm -hmm. So that's another tricky part to this, is that despite the power of larger social structures, people actually can author themselves in really creative and imaginative ways. Mm -hmm. And this aspect of studying identity makes room for cracks of possibility and agency and transformation. So <clears throat> to summarize what I've said so far, these perspectives highlight the explanatory uh, potential of identity. Um, and that's why I love the construct. I keep saying to myself, and maybe I shouldn't say this on this interview, but it's absolutely honest. I keep wondering whether or not I should give up this construct of identity because it is so murky and, and complex, but it has such strong explanatory potential because it opens up this space and tension between structure and agency. However, I do kind of want to emphasize that identity isn't a final form achievement. It's not a static accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So in many of the studies, I discuss this idea of identity work. And this is the ways youth position themselves and get positioned in relation to the normative practices in a, in a setting or in relation to social structures. Mm -hmm.